I said, uh, why did he shoot you? And Hazak wears stimulus money. Good evening, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of your night. I'm Antoine. This is the news. We start tonight with an Indianapolis man suspected of killing three adults and a child. He told police he fatally shot the four victims after he and his girlfriend argued because he wanted a share of her stimulus check. Craig Jackson says he was waiting on a food delivery late Saturday night when he heard a knock on his door. I was sitting right here in my chair. I heard a loud bang on the door, bam, 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 bam. I guess uh, she, uh, I said, who is it? She said, can you help me? I've been shot. Her family says it was Janetrius Moore. She had been shot by Malik Halfacre. She said her baby daddy shot her, uh, and he shot her, he shot her, her mother and the kids. She said she was the only person who uh, who got away. While they waited for help to arrive, Jackson tried to keep more conscious by talking to her. I said, uh, why did he shoot you? And Hazak wears stimulus money. He was in disbelief that Half Acre would kill four people and injure another over a stimulus check. Hazak wears were, I'm the only one who got away. He killed the rest of them. Exactly the people killed in the shooting have been identified as Anthony Johnson, Tamika Brown, Daquan Moore, and seven-year-old Eve Moore. Moore told Jackson after the shooting, Half Acre was chasing her. She was frantic. She was. He was hysterical. She was. She was in pain. Jackson said a pickup truck drove around the block slowly three times while they were waiting, but he couldn't see who was inside. She kept on saying, "Please help me! Please help me! Please help me!" And I told her, I said, "The, uh, the, uh, the police are on the way. The police are on the way." Such a tragic story. Let this be a lesson to be careful who you date. In other news, a moot message from the Vatican saying that the Catholic Church cannot bless same-sex unions. Did you abuse those teenagers under your care? The same church that allows little boys' lives to be ruined through priest homosexuality struggle says God cannot bless sin. It's like the same thing when the Pope said, Gay men aren't welcome in the seminary. Well, honey, close the seminary because a lot of them are. The Vatican's orthodoxy office wrote, God does not and cannot bless sin. He blesses sinful man so that he may recognize that he's part of his plan of love and allow himself to be changed by him. When it goes against God's laws, then it becomes Sinful. Father Anthony Figueroa says the Vatican decree is a strong affirmation of the traditional church doctorate. If we bless a union, we're actually putting them on a par with marriage. Figueroa says Pope Francis has gone further than any other pontiff in welcoming and accepting those of the LGBTQ plus community. But when priests came to the Vatican to clarify if blessing same-sex unions is allowed, the answer was no. That for the church is outside what God intended in creation. Some civil rights groups call the response disappointing. This issue is just showing how out of touch the Vatican is with Catholics in the pews. Pope Francis added this was not unjust discrimination, but rather a clarification of the liturgical right of marriage. In some countries like the U.S. and Germany, parish priests had already begun blessing same-sex unions. What they need to be worried about is how God himself is going to take care of those priests that have been messing with kids for all of these years. He's got his eyes on you. It was previously reported that CBS is the talk canceled his shows for Monday and Tuesday due to an investigation into a heated argument between Sharon Osbourne and her co-host, Cheryl Underwood. And don't try and cry, because if anyone should be crying, it should be me. Sources say the show will remain on hiatus until next Tuesday due to new allegations that have just surfaced. According to reports, Sharon Osbourne is being accused of using offensive language including racial names and lesbian slurs toward our former co-host, Julie Chen and Sarah Gilbert. These claims are being backed up by another former co-host, Leah Remini.
I say she's guilty. But let's move on. What's the deal with Tiffany Haddish and Nicki Minaj? During a recent chat on the Invitation Only app, Clubhouse, a user asked Haddish whether anybody had ever told her that she's like the Nicki Minaj of comedy right now. Anybody ever tell you you like the Nicki Minaj of comedy right now? You're just killing the motherfucking guy. While the unidentified man was trying to praise the comedian. Killing the motherfucking guy. You are definitely the Nicki of this shit right now. She took the issue with comparison and shot back. And I'm like Nicki. I treat everybody with respect and dignity. Hey. Nikki has yet to publicly respond to the girl's trip star, but her legion of fans rushed to her defense on Twitter. Nicki Minaj is funnier than Tiffany Haddish, one barb tweeted. Another echoed saying, If we're being completely honest, I've laughed harder at Nicki Bars than anything Tiffany has ever said. Minaj's friend 50 Cent also took her side, writing in an IG comment, Shaking my head, I don't know why people mess with Nicki. Laugh out loud. It's never a fair game when 50 gets involved. It's still unclear what happened between Haddish and the Queen of Rap. That just about does it for us here tonight. I am Antoine Edwards. Now, you know the news. Hot topics, no one do it better. We tune in there right now like go, 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 go. go. This is Twan 360. Go, 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 go. Go ahead, slide with me.